Oh man, I am so freaking lost. Heavy side one, this is Bayside Tower, come in. Oh, uh, Bay uh, Bayside Tower, this is Heavy Side one. Do you read me? Do you read me? Heavy Side one, Bayside Tower, read you. Go ahead and ident. What the hell, what's an ident? Uh, I think I'm over Texas, Dallas. Mm -hmm. I, this is heavy side one. Heavy side one, we read your ident. Go ahead with your request. Uh, heavy side one requests uh, ILS two eight Lima touch and go. Base side tower copy heavy side request. Head inbound to the localizer on two zero three. Turn left at waypoint. Descend to four thousand. Oh, like I know where that is. Uh, copy that tower. Heavy side, base side tower. Please repeat. Repeat what? Heavy side. Repeat your instructions. Oh yeah, I'm uh, gonna go to the two four uh, zero, and uh, then I'm gonna drop down to the. IL Sierra S. Heavy side, this is Bayside Tower. Do you have good cabin pressure? Nope. Am I on the ground? Hello? Is anyone there? tower okay everyone welcome to lecture 17 today we're going to talk about chapter 19 and uh, continue on some properties of the Laplace transform so recall last time um, we had uh, we did some specific functions like the cosine and sine function and the Dirac Delta function we looked at their Laplace transform and we kind of explored a handful of properties particularly the uh, um, the derivative of a function and then taking its Laplace transform, etc. So we're going to do more properties like that today. And we're going to show you just how easy it is to use. Now even you can use Laplace Clean. Um, in stores now, as seen on TV, uh, I had to include Billy Mays here. I don't know if you guys remember Billy Mays. You probably should. It wasn't that long ago. Um, but maybe when you were really young. I guess he died back in 2009, I think. Um... But yeah, I used to be like this spokesperson. So anyways, maybe you don't get the reference. And it's a Pokemon card. So it refers, you know, we got some call back to last time uh, with our with our Pokemans. All righty, let's get started. I don't have any other exciting stuff in here today. So um, that was it. That was your that was your whole moment. So just shut it off now and walk away because it's just math from here on out. Okay, let's go. Uh, we got the functions multiplied by T. So what happens when we multiply a function by t? Uh, well, it looks like this. And for our purposes today, we're generally going to treat our placeholder function as f of t. And it's associated Laplace transform will be capital F of s, right? And this is standard notation for us. Uh, should be no surprise there. So ideally what we'd like is some kind of property that tells us what happens when I do an operation or some kind of something to my function and then see what it spits out in terms of this fs. Because really that's um, key for being able to utilize the Laplace transform to its fullest potential is having these little shortcuts all over the place. And like I said, they're kind of like collecting Pokemon. You just, you know, you pick the right one for the right battle and... Uh, you know, play your cards right, and you're good to go. I don't actually play the Pokemon card game. I'm not that much of a nerd. Come on, guys. Um, I, I do play I do play a little bit of Magic the Gathering, but not but not at actual Friday Night Magic or anything like that, okay? Just casually, all right? Just casual. So as we look at the integral for this, we end up with um, t, f of t, e to the minus s, t, dt. And from here, 
we can actually bundle this together a little bit um, to make this easier. So we pull f of t to the side and we say, well, what if I looked at t as a coefficient of e to the minus st dt? Now notice in here that we're integrating over t, not s. And so one thing that we can do that's kind of fun is we can re-express this stuff in brackets. Let me do it in green or something right here as d ds, we'll throw a minus sign in front to, to balance things out, of e to the minus st. Now notice here that when we take the derivative with respect to s, t is just a constant. So that constant falls down in front of e. Okay, well, I'm like, I guess, here we go, making stuff more complicated again. Zero to infinity, f of t, and then we'll throw the minus up front. Um, we have d ds e to the minus st dt. Uh, okay. Well, as it turns out, a funny thing happens in calculus. And as long as our functions are friendly, and I'm not going to define the, the, the technical way for friendly, but um, as long as they play nice, right, we can exchange these kind of operations. We can exchange integration um, and differentiation or two integrals together. Recall uh, if you had something like this, right, from, what is it, like calc 2 or something like that. If I had negative infinity to infinity and negative infinity to infinity of some function, I don't know, it really doesn't matter. x, y usually is what you probably saw, right, in calc 3, I guess. dx, dy, it really doesn't matter if I do this either way. I could write this dx, dy, or dy, dx because the result is the same um, for nice functions, okay? So we're going to assume that we have nice functions here, and therefore we can do this particular operation. So we end up with, I'm going to drop my colors. This, and you go, I don't know what FT is. And I say, I don't really care, <laughs> because... Remember, we're just writing this in terms of the Laplace transform of f of t, and that's exactly what we have right here. We've chucked out everything else, and we're left with just minus d over ds of f s. This result should come as a little strange, but not unexpected, if we really think about it. And why should it not be unexpected? Well, recall that when I took the derivative of t... Actually, let me, before I get into this, let me write this out formally so you have something nice in your notes. So L of T, F of T, I'm sorry, L, blah, can't talk today. The Laplace transform of T times F T is equal to minus D DS FS, okay? Another way we, we, we uh, like to write this is, and this is just for charts and stuff, but usually like a little double arrow there and then... Uh, minus ds fs, okay? So this shows us that we're going back and forth between uh, the time and frequency domain. But this is generally the formula that, you know, in a formula way to look at it. Um, but I want you guys to start thinking about it as, as two different realms that we're going between, okay? So this is actually a better way to think about it, though traditionally you guys are used to seeing, you know, formulas all over the place for things. Think of it as being kind of a fluid... Um, back and forth portal, okay? And no, I'm not going to put on my wizard hat again, just so we can demonstrate that. All right, so here it is. Um, recall, however, that when I had d, dt, ft, that when I did the Laplace transform, I ended up with something that looked kind of similar. S times f of s, right? And we have some plus constants in here, whatever. I know. I know they're there. You know they're there. You really want to see them? All right, fine. It's minus F zero, okay? All right, we happy now? We got our constant? But here's the thing that we really need to take away, right? The derivative in the time domain is just S in the, uh, I almost want to say Fourier domain. It's the frequency domain. <laughs> You'll see it's the Fourier domain. Um, but, uh, 
Over here, we have the Laplace of t times f. It gives me the derivative in the, in the frequency domain. But there's a sign change. So that's going to help guide us a little bit when we start to talk about our inverse Laplace transform later on. So there are certain rules for, for going back and forth. We've gone forward. We're going to see what happens when we go backwards uh, next time. Okay, so notice here that the big takeaway is duality, okay? That's going to be a running theme for this chapter and for the next. There's duality between the time and frequency spaces. Next, we have functions shifted in time. All right, I've got my 13-foot long scarf, hand-knitted. In case you guys don't know who I'm talking about, it's Tom Baker, the best doctor ever in Doctor Who. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take the Laplace transform of t minus t naught, 0 to infinity, f of t minus t naught. Now we need to be careful here, right? What did we say when we talked about these step functions? We said hey, as long as it's just u of t, nobody cares. We know what we're doing with that. Um, that's fine. But as soon as we start to deal with these time shifts, we got to be a little bit careful. All right, so u of t looks like this. If you don't know that by now, you're in the wrong place. All right, let me write it here. u of t minus t naught. Where does it shift, left or right? That's that's right. You got it right. Good job. This is like Dora the Explorer over here. <laughs> it moves over here, yeah? Okay. So at t naught, I have u of t minus t naught. At t naught, the internal argument of my step function is zero for blue here, and it jumps up to one. Okay, so... Effectively, if I'm evaluating this whole thing, it only turns on at t naught. So I don't need to evaluate anything before t naught. That means that this translates to, whoopsies, a little thick there. This translates to an integral from t naught to infinity of f of t minus t naught, and then e to the minus st. That does not make this go away yet, right? We have to deal with that in a different fashion. And in fact, what we're going to do is use a variable substitution. Yeah. Okay, so let's write this out here. We're going to let gamma equal to t minus t naught. And this is a substitution that shouldn't come as any surprise, given the fact that we would like to get something in the form that looks more, I don't know, uniform inside that function. d gamma then is just equal to dt. Because with respect to uh, t and gamma, t naught's a constant. It's always, it's always just constant. So um, so we plug these guys in, and we end up with the following. I'm going to save the limits of integration until the end here. Um, f of t minus t naught, well, simple gamma substitution. That's what we did it for. e to the minus s, remember, s is constant with respect to gamma, t, and t naught. But how do we fix what's inside of there? Well, we just rearrange the variables a little bit. We end up with uh, gamma plus t naught is equal to t. So that'll work. Gamma plus t naught. T naught's a constant, so that's fine. Uh, dt goes to t gamma, or dt goes to d gamma. So that's good there. Uh, what do I do about this lower limit of integration here? Well, um, initially you might think, well, t naught, uh, if I rearrange my variables a little bit, I end up with t minus gamma. So I just pop that in there. Well, that would be wrong. Why is that wrong? Well, because these are my two variables. And actually what I'm what I'm really doing here with my limits of integration is I'm looking at t as it goes to t naught, right? And so I'm taking t as it goes uh, uh, from t naught up to infinity. So what does this mean in terms of gamma? Well, if gamma is equal to t minus t naught, then, then gamma is actually going to... Um, whatever t is going to, right, which is t naught, minus that t naught. So gamma is actually going to zero. So it's going from zero to infinity, 
for, with respect to gamma, okay? All right, so that makes some sense. Um, we didn't really want gamma inside of the limit of integration anyway because that didn't really make a lot of sense when we're integrating over that same thing. Uh, recall that when you integrate over something, you are effectively removing that variable from everything that's inside of here by evaluating it over a particular set of bounds. You can do some other funny business with it, but generally speaking, that's true. And at this point, what we re should recognize is that everything is gamma uh, set to go, except, you know, one of these things is not like the other, right? This T-naught is kind of sticking out like a sore thumb, but it's actually pretty easy to resolve. We we're going to separate out this exponential expression. Remember the things uh, added together in the exponent, we can just separate out as uh, different factors of each other. And so we have e to the minus s t naught on the outside times the integral of zero to infinity of f gamma, e to the minus s, and all I have left over on the inside is gamma, d gamma. Okay, well, what is this? Well, this is actually just f of s. It doesn't matter what these things are in, in the interior here, right? It has the exact same form. Uh, this could be gamma, it could be T, it could be, I mean, it could be our old friend Spooky Ghost for all we care, right? You guys all remember Spooky Ghost. Ooh. So from here, all we have left is, to rewrite the expression, let me write it in different color here. So again, we have uh, a sort of duality at play here. Um, you recall from last lecture, Okay, that we had the Laplace transform of e to the minus a t, right? And we had a ut in here too. This was equal to 1 over s plus a, right? And effectively, this was just a frequency shifted version of the Laplace transform of u of t, which was equal to, as you recall, 1 over s. What's... What's really going on here is that a time shift here translates to a frequency shift of frequencies in the in, in this new domain. A uh, better way to look at it is from this perspective, a frequency shift here is just a translation in the frequency domain. Ah, that makes more sense, doesn't it? But that same version or that same operator in the frequency domain translates back to just a simple shift in the in the time domain. So there's there's definitely a pairing going on here. Okay, and we can write this just like we did with the other one as a Laplace pair. Okay. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and do the generalized version which is e to the minus a t times any given function, not just u t. So we knew what it what it did to u t. Let's see if it's true that it just shifts. So we have the Laplace transform of e to the minus a t f of t is equal to, by definition, 0 to infinity of e to the minus a t f of t e to the minus s t dt. And the first thing you should want to go do, just like we did before, is combine stuff up in the exponent. So we have 0 to infinity of ft, e to the minus s, um, oops, sorry, e to the minus s plus a, t, dt. Now we're going to do yet another uh, substitution. And... Uh, that's going to be lambda, oops, lambda is equal to s plus a. When we do the substitution in there, we end up with the following. 0 to infinity of f of t. This is totally unaffected by the substitution, by the way. Uh, e to the minus lambda t dt. And just like we talked about before, the form is what matters here, right? Not necessarily the letters at play. So this is actually a function, a Laplace transform, but it's now a new function out of t, right? Because we're integrating over t. So all those t's are going to go away. But it is a function of whatever 
S was, right? But S is gone now. We've, we've replaced it with lambda. Well, now that I'm in this frequency space, now that I'm in the other side of, of the other domain here, uh, I can actually do, do a simple replacement here and say this is actually just um, F of S plus A. So although we had uh, a minus sign here, we actually ended up with a plus sign here, right? So let's write this out more formally. Wow, that's a nice, very clean equation. And if you wanted to write it out this way, you could too. I like this way the best. Okay. So notice here that there's a, a yet another sign change at play. So when we look back here, we had a uh, sign change occurring for uh, this one too with our duality, right? We had this, um, oops, not this one, this one here. So that if I had a T up front, I had a minus sign in front here. But when I had a derivative inside my Laplace transform, I actually had a positive T on the other side. So some kind of duality is going on here, but there's a minus sign that gets carried along for the ride uh, in that duality, okay? You just start to recognize that pattern in here a little bit. Okay. All right, let's do some time integration now. So this one's gonna be kind of a weird one because what we're gonna look at is actually the Laplace transform of an integral, but this integral is going to run from negative infinity to T. Now, this seems a little odd because we're so used to seeing integrals uh, that run between uh, zero and T or negative infinity and infinity or zero and infinity. But usually we don't end up with this end of the spectrum. And this is just because of that fundamental theorem of calculus is, that's at play here. Um, and you can see here that um, notice that our running variable here is tau. Uh, this isn't exactly the same tau as a convolution here, obviously, right? Um, but we want t on the outside because at the end of the day, we want this to be a function of t, not a function of tau. Okay, so this is a little odd. So by definition, we write this out. We have the integral from 0 to infinity of this block. And actually, I'm going to write this block in red. So negative infinity to t of f of tau, d tau, times e to the minus at, I'm sorry, not at, st dt. Okay, so the only thing that's getting integrated here that we're concerned about inside the t integral is this t in the limits of integration. So this, in point of fact, cannot pass out through here, right? Why? Because it's bounded by this. We can't just switch this willy-nilly. And so this is not one of those nice functions that we're going to be doing that with. However, what we can do is let uh, u equal to our function here, this integral, d tau, and then dv will be equal to e to the minus st, which means that our v is equal to minus 1 over s, e to the minus st. And this is where the nice part comes in. This is why we've defined our integral in such an odd way. du, as a matter of fact, is just going to be equal to f of t. Right? And the dt goes along for the ride. So that should be pretty clear if you've taken a, a calculus course here in the last few years. Um, this transition should be familiar to you. Okay, so when we do the legwork here, we end up with the following. This integral becomes minus e to the minus st over s times the integral from negative infinity to t. Recall that we're doing uv here, so this is just going to have a big old mess of stuff in here. f of tau d tau. Okay. And then we're going to subtract off um, the uh, second, second portion here. But it's going to end up being a plus because the negatives are going to cancel, right? This negative here and the minus sign are going to cancel out. And then we're left with just the integral from 0 to infinity of 
uh, something nice here, VDU, which is, we've already got the 1 over S on the outside, so we're just left with F of T, E to the minus ST, and then DT will stick at the end there. All right, well, this portion right here, let me do it in a different color. Let's do blue. This portion right here is actually just F of S, right? This is the Laplace transform of our original function F T. And so what we have attached to this is, if we expand this out a little bit, we have one over S times F of S as that term. And then for this other term here, we need to evaluate it from our limits of integration, which was uh, zero to infinity for T. And when we simplify this, we end up with the following. We know that at infinity, uh, as t goes to infinity, this portion right here is going to go to uh, zero. So all that stuff just goes away. And then we have minus, and then e to the minus uh, s times zero. Well, that's e to the zero, which is zero. But remember, this is the second part of that uh, interval right here. So we want to make sure that we keep that minus sign. This is 1 over s times the integral from negative infinity to, well, t is 0, f of tau d tau. And that's it. So we have, we'll write it all out in, I don't know, let's pick a new color, orange. Just getting colors at random here. So our final expression then is going to look something like this f of s over s plus this integral, negative infinity to zero, of f of tau d tau over s. And if you wanted to write it as 1 over s on the outside, that's fine too. But the reason we wrote it this way was that uh, the initial condition here appears over s. So this is kind of an initial condition, right? We're evaluating this up to zero. Huh? And um, we're scaling it by S, or excuse me, 1 over S. And 1 over S is really just a unit step function, right? Remember that the unit step function, its Laplace transform is 1 over S. And so this is just the initial input, right, or our initial condition, if you want to think about it that way, over S, or effectively times the Fourier transform of the unit step function. And likewise, um, this is the Laplace transform times the Laplace transform, excuse me, the Laplace transform of F times the Laplace transform of the unit step function. So there's some things at play here, right? The, some things that make a lot of, lot of sense. Recall that for differentiation, we also had here we are. For the differenti uh, differentiation ones, when we took a derivative, we ended up with something in the uh, numerator, right? And that went both ways. When I took the derivative on this side, I ended up with an s in the numerator. When I took the derivative on the frequency side, I ended up with a t in the numerator. Now with integration, no surprise, when I integrate, I actually am dividing out by an s and accounting for some initial conditions. So this actually makes a good deal of sense uh, if you just think about it in terms of what it should kind of be. All right, so this is our Laplace transform. And you can rewrite this, of course, as we have been doing using this notation if you prefer, and we do, and there we are, all right. There. Okay, so now that we've done a lot of these properties, I'm going to jump to the end real quick and show you what we've kind of collected, all the Pokemon cards that I've got in my uh, carrying case here. And then we're going to use all these properties to solve some problems. So let's review a little bit here for input functions and output functions. All right. So I have um, 
in the time domain versus the frequency domain. If I put in a delta, I get out of one, et cetera, et cetera, okay? When I look at derivatives, I'm effectively multiplying by s. When I take the integrals, I'm effectively dividing by s. When I look at a time shift, I end up with a e to the minus st naught shift in the frequency domain. And when I do that same kind of shift in the time domain, I end up with just a simple shift in the frequency domain. So I like to think about this as a shift in uh, frequency here is a shift in frequency here, right? So notice that this is um, going to be potentially some kind of complex number up here. This A does not need to be real. Its real portion has some restrictions, but it does not need to be real. And therefore, I can actually do some funky shifting on, on F of T here. And this is generally referred to as a frequency shift of a function. And the reason that it is referred to as a frequency shift is that this particular function, when transformed into the Laplace domain, uh, gives me something that is just simply shifted over in frequency, where s is at our, our given frequency, our variable frequency. Okay? So this is a frequency shift in time, right? This is a time shift in time. And if you want to think about it this way, this is a frequency shift in frequency, right? And this is a uh, a time shift in frequency. Does that make sense? A little bit? I think these two make the most sense, and then these kind of follow from it. Okay? And when we say a, a time shift in time, what we really mean is a time shift in the time domain. And when we say frequency shift in time, we mean frequency shift in the time domain, and so on. So here's a frequency shift in the frequency domain down at the bottom right. Okay? This is, this is the part that's really hard for most people to grasp. So I hope that it's making sense to you guys. So we're going to walk through all these examples. Example number one. We have the following. Recall we, we had this little nifty circuit. Uh, little RL circuit. And we had for i in, it was equal to, i in of t, it was equal to 1 over 10 times the derivative of i l t, which was some kind of voltage before, plus i l t. Pretty simple differential equation. We could solve this pretty easily, right? Um, not a big deal. Well, now that we have some Laplace transform tools, let's, let's test this out, all right? You know, when that, when that, hero in the in the story or the anime gets their secret power unlocked or that secret weapon and they finally try it out for the first time and it's like whoa that's crazy he's gonna mess up that bad guy next time well we're gonna mess up that bad guy <laughs> this is our bad guy it's going down all right so here it goes we're gonna take the laplace transform of everything all right here we go pew all right, so this is going to become I in S, and we're going to have the 1 over 10 goes along for the ride. Recall that since the Laplace uh, integral is just, well, an integral, any constants in there that are a constant factor just pop right out. Um, when we take the Laplace transform of this little bit here, we know the rule for that, don't we? It's uh, dt, d over dt of f of t, okay, that gives me S times the Laplace transform, whatever that is. Okay, so this is going to be S times the Laplace transform of IL. I'm just going to make it a capital IL of S. Notice here that this is not just like a DC uh, current, right? This is something very different. I've kind of made this assumption that I'm just taking capital letters for granted here. But as a matter of fact, what I really have is something in a totally different domain space. So this means something very different. The input value here makes this a totally different function than what you've seen in the past. 
all right? This is in a totally different realm. So pay attention to the inputs, pay attention to the variables that functions are running over when you're looking at these kind of problems. Okay, but I need to also be careful here because I want to make sure that I capture any initial conditions that might be hanging around. So let's make sure that we tack that on at the end like we're supposed to. And we have that. And then we have, uh, for the last term, it's just the Laplace transform of ILT. Um, we already said that we're just going to define these two things. Uh, let me write it over here real quick. We're just going to state that whatever it is, it's this. And whatever IL of T is, it's equal to ILS. And... I know one of you, at least one of you, is going to say, hey, what happened to this one? Remember, this is a lowercase, lowercase f right here, of an input with respect to time. This is actually t, uh, a t at zero, right? So be careful with that. All right. So this is the original function. It's weird because it's a constant that we've transformed in, into the... Um, frequency domain, but it is not a function of time anymore because we've evaluated it at a particular point. All right. So this is constant. Okay. Keep that in mind. All right. And then uh, just write this guy in here. Finally, I'll stop. I'll shut up for a minute and actually write something. All right. So now what? All right. Um, well, let's move some stuff around. See if anything resolves itself. So I have I L S. I'm going to pull that to the outside of everything. Okay. S over 10 plus uh, 1, I guess, because this is coming up from over here. And then I'm going to leave the I L crap on the outside. So that's just going to go over here. I have I L of 0 over 10. And it's just going to hang out over here by itself and go play in the corner. So our... Circuit was originally at rest, right? So this goes right to zero. So I don't care. Don't care. Long red hair, don't care. Well, what's left of my red hair anyway? So if I of t was equal to an impulse, then this means we should know that this is equal to just one, right? We'll keep it really, really simple. So then, there we are. And f I guess we just rewrite the rest of the expression here. Tag it along for the ride. But now what do I do? Well, I can combine uh, some stuff here. Make this fraction look a little bit nicer. Recall, this is just 10 over 10, right? <laughs> we add these together. No big deal. I hope you can do that. Um, otherwise, this is going to be a really long class. So we're going to start getting into a lot of partial fraction stuff here soon. So, yeah, hope you know how to work with fractions. All right, now what do I do? i got to do something with this guy to make it more simple. Um, all right, let's isolate IL. Let's, let's put IL by itself now. So now we're just going to take the reciprocal of this. Okay, 10 over S plus 10. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have seen this before. This looks like something I'm familiar with. This looks like 10 times 1 over s plus 10, which is just some constant. That's just a constant plus an s. What did we see that had a constant plus an s? Here, ah, there we are. Constant plus s. Okay. So in that case, if I have a constant plus s... If I were to figure out where it came from in the time domain, it looks like this function. So as a matter of fact, I can do exactly that. We're going to talk more about the inverse uh, Laplace transform next time, but um, I know where this guy came from. I know what you are. You are secretly, if I take the Laplace transform back of everything, okay, I'll just write it like this. I'm going to be a little sloppy. We'll do more formal uh, notation next time. But we end up with I L of T now. We're going back to the 
back to the time domain, must be equal to 10 times that function. So this is going to be e, let's see here, e to the minus 10 t, e to the minus 10 t times u t. We just solved a differential equation without even touching an integral or touching any uh, derivatives. We just did it, okay, with a handy chart, a little bit of algebra. Can you feel the power? It's, it's like crazy right now. It's crazy strong. All right. Let's, let's, go, let's go bust something else up. I want to see what else we can do with this thing. If your head's not exploding right now, it should be. And you're wrong. Because this is like the coolest part of electrical engineering is, are these transforms. So powerful. All right. So let's say we had included a different initial condition. IL0 is equal to 3 amps. Oh, man. Now everything's screwed up. We'll have to start all over and do it all over again. And remember what happened when we changed initial conditions with ordinary differential equations? We had to, like, resolve everything. It was a pain in the butt. Well, what do we do here? Well, we just take this equation here, or rather right here, and uh, I'm just going to copy it over real quick. Let's do that. Now we're going to say that this value here should be 3 amps. Oh, no, everything's ruined. Nuts. Well, actually, it's not. If we keep the same uh, forcing function on that side, uh, and we take, you know, it's Laplace transform of the impulse function is just 1 still. That hasn't changed. This is just 3 over 10. So now we have 1 plus 3 over 10. This is just going to the other side, by the way. And that's equal to ILS of S over 10 plus 1. Well, hang on a second. That's actually just... Uh, this is just 13 over 10. So really what we end up with is something that's not too odd, actually. <laughs> Let's write this out all the way. We're getting a little excited here. Oops. Come on. There we go. Uh, flop it over to the other side. Take that reciprocal. The 10s cancel out. And what do you know? We end up with ILS is equal to 13 over S plus 10. If we pop that 13 to the outside... And we take the Laplace, the inverse Laplace transform, right? Take us back to the T domain. Use our portal gun. We end up with 13 times. Oh, this is just 13 times 1 over S plus 10. We just did that. We don't need to even do it again. This is E to the minus 10 T U T. Hey, folks, guess what we just did? We just changed the initial condition and then almost trivially solved for the new output of the system. What? Can you believe this? This is insane. All right, fine. I'll prove it to you again. If you are not amazed yet, I will make you amazed. Here we go. Let's say that our circuit was at rest, but instead we want a totally different forcing function. Let's make it really complicated. Let's do one of these nasty decaying functions or something. Let's make I in of T equal to, notice my, my really fancy I here. <laughs> my handwriting is terrible. I don't know how you guys have you know dealt with this for over three weeks now. If we take this initial condition, then on the left-hand side, that's all that changes. Let's go back and look real quick. Um, we're going to go at rest. So I'm going to borrow this one. This is really all I do, actually, is just move stuff back and forth. Um, this goes to zero, right? Because we're going to start with uh, um, at rest system again, just for just just for giggles. And then um, this actually is going to change, right? This guy here. So instead, this was before, right? Now, new and improved, we have, ooh, Crap. What's the Laplace transform of 4e to the minus 10t ut? Hmm. I wonder what it could be. Here we go. <laughs> That's it. It's just going to be 4 times. Let me write it this way. Laplace transform. It's going to be 4 times 1 over s plus 10. Uh, that's it. That's That's it. That's it. That's all we did. Okay, so now, now this is equal to 
I, capital I, N of S. Be careful there. I almost wrote a T. All right, so let's write this out. 4 over S plus 10 is equal to ILS times S uh, plus 10 over 10. And we got rid of this thing, so we don't have to worry about it. It keeps it clean. Okay, so now I'm going to take the reciprocal on both sides. I got 4 times 10 over S plus 10 times S plus 10, or S plus 10 squared. That's 40 over S plus 10 squared equals ILS. Well, now I'm kind of stuck, because I don't have a handy-dandy chart for that. Uh, maybe this would work, but that's a plus in there, and that's not going to really be pretty, so that's not going to go. What can I do? Oh, hey, wait a minute. If I take some derivative, I know the I know the power rule, right? I can do something with the power rule. Okay, so we should recognize right away then, in fact, that this is the uh, ILS is equal to the derivative of 40 over S plus 10. Is this true? Well, let's use our rule. Let's go ahead and actually apply this. If we took this derivative, this is equal to minus 40. Okay, that just goes along for the ride. What's the derivative of... 1 over s plus 10. Well, it's just, really, I could treat this and do like a substitution thing or whatever. Um, however you want to approach it, what you end up with is you're just going to drop s by, and it's a uh, you know, companion term there, by a power. And when you drop it down by a power, well, it's power right now. If I write this out even nicer for you guys, you'll be really happy. Maybe, I don't know right? There's my, there's my power rule in action. Pow, pow, power rule. There we go. This is going to be minus one. And then this is going to drop the power to minus two. And that's exactly what we have right here, right? So I believe this. So let's take this at face value and say, okay, well, now what do I do? Well, I go back to my rules and I look around and I say, okay, what gives me the derivative? Okay, I look around and I actually don't see the one that I want. I need to update the chart because we have done it today, right? We did it earlier. It's this one. So L of uh, TFT gives me the derivative of the Laplace transform, negative derivative of the Laplace transform in the frequency domain. Let's write that out here, shall we? Okay, and it kind of follows suit from here, right? Actually, this one follows from that, but you get the idea. All right, well, when we apply that rule that I just put in here and made up, but we didn't really make it up because we actually had it from before, we end up with the following. I just have the, whatever the Laplace transform is, by the way, this 40 is going to come out because we don't really need to be holding 40s. There we go. We got minus 40 on the outside. Actually, the minus sign. Okay, hang on. We have 40 on the outside times this minus d ds of 1 over s plus 10. Well, we know what the um, what the function was for this, right? The f of t associated with this by the inverse Laplace transform was just equal to uh, e to the minus 10 t U, T, right? And so when we look at this, what we actually have is, okay, I had this attached to whatever the Laplace version was of that. So all I'm going to do is tack a T onto it. So a derivative, a minus derivative in the frequency domain translates to multiply by T in the time domain. Got it. I can do that. So a derivative right here in this domain translates to a t in the time domain. Okay, I know what I look like in the time domain for my original function. I just have to multiply it by t. So this is going to be equal to, I'm sorry, not equal to. Let me write it down here one more line. I'm going to take the inverse Laplace transform, which I don't know why we're doing all this right now because that's the very next chapter. But anyways... And I have 40 times whatever the heck this is. Well, we just do t times this thing, which is e to the minus 10t 
U T. And that's equal to our lowercase i l t. So although this was a little bit confusing, we got it in the end, right? All we had to do was take a derivative. We took a derivative of a thing that we kind of already knew how to do. That was it. That was the only thing we had to do to solve this problem differently. Are you still sold? I'm still sold. I still think this is pretty cool. There we go. All right, let's do one more. So finally, let's incorporate an initial condition and a forcing function with Laplace transform. So recall now that we're going to just rewrite everything. Um, I'm going to write out the equation first, and then we'll do kind of some replacements after. Okay, so now I'm going to use the following. I in of t is going to be equal to that, um, that same forcing function we had from before, 4 times e to the minus 10 t u t. And my initial condition is no longer at rest, so not rest. I have, in fact, that I at uh, 0 of L is equal to, uh, what did we say before? 3, 3 amps. Let me write this a little bit nicer. I at L of 0 is equal to 3 amps. Okay, wow, this should really, really mess us up, right, guys? This is really going to screw us up. We're never going to be able to solve this. Just kidding. We're going to do it in like two minutes. The Laplace transform of this, bam, it's just 4 over s plus 10. We knew that from before. We did that already. I showed you guys why that's true. This goes along for the ride. s plus 10 over 10. And then our initial condition, we saw that from before. Bam, minus 3 over 10. Okay, so now I'm just going to pop this over to the other side. This is going to simplify to 3s plus 70 over 10s plus 10. Um, so yeah, you can do it a couple different ways. Now we just multiply uh, both sides by 10 over s plus 10. So we end up with ILS is equal to uh, 3S plus 70 over 10 times S plus 10 times S plus 10, right, over 10. So the 10s cancel, or under 10, I should say. But then what can we do? Well, if we break this apart, we actually can make something very convenient for us. If I do 3S plus 30, or S plus 10 squared, plus 40 over s plus 10 squared, then I end up with two things that I do know how to do. This is actually equal to 3 times s plus 10 over s plus 10 squared. So this is 3 over s plus 10 plus 40 over s plus 10, uh, 10 squared. We already solved this one. We've already solved this one. We just slap those two pieces together. And remember that the Laplace transform in its inverse uh, are going to just distribute over addition. So our lives are super easy because integrals distribute over addition. So we end up with 3 times for ILT now. We're going into the inverse. We're taking the inverse Laplacian to take us back to the time domain. There it is. We kind of put the UT on the outside as a, as a formality here. We know that that's there. But we ended up with just the two parts kind of chucked together, some different coefficients thrown in there, but that's okay. Um, and that's it. That's our whole solution. So if you look back here, you might recognize this, this bit. Um, this kind of changed a little bit, but it's kind of balancing itself out, right? That's really what's going on here. It's just balancing itself out. Notice here that we don't combine these two terms because what happened was is I raised the exponent here, or I guess I should say lower the exponent, right? Because it's technically a negative 2. As I lowered that, I added, um, excuse me, I multiplied a t in there. So this makes these two not able to play nicely together. You could re-express this um, as having, you know, that e to the minus uh, 10t on the outside. If you really wanted to, you could do 3 plus 40t, right? Um, e to the minus t. But honestly, for me, this doesn't really do much because effectively, when we think about uh, frequencies and stuff, we really do want to keep these two separate. 
They, they act differently from each other and they kind of act independently. And just like we had with our uh, solutions to, what was it, uh, critically damp systems, we did keep these separate. We kept them as two sort of separate solutions. And there's a good reason for that. But by and large, this is the way we want to write it because it's it's going to be convenient for us in the long run. And if we ever want to go back to that Laplace domain, man, we're all geared up and ready to go anyway. All right. Well, I hope you're also all geared up and ready to go. Um, we're going to do some more inverse Laplace transform next time. We're going to talk about it. Things are going to get really freaky. And uh, we're going to look into the partial fraction process, which is a little bit confusing at first. But if you're really good at algebra, um, you're going to have a good time. All right. I'll see you guys later. Bye.